1985, Kirk Noble Bloodsworth was sentenced to die in a Maryland prison for the brutal rape and murder of nine-year-old Don Hamilton. This dark journey began almost nine months earlier on July 25, 1984, when two young boys who were fishing in a small pond behind the apartment complex where Don lived witnessed her walk off into the woods with a man they described as skinny, six foot five, with a bushy mustache, tan skin, and blonde hair. They were the last people to see her alive. Hours later, Don's body was found lying face down in the woods by a Baltimore police detective. At the time of the murder, Kirk did not live in the area and was neither six foot five nor was he blonde with a bushy mustache. He was a six foot brawny redhead with mutton chop sideburns who had worn glasses since age five. He had witnesses who could place him at home at the time of the murder, and there was no physical evidence that linked Kirk to the crime scene. At the end, Kirk was convicted primarily by his slim resemblance to composite drawing based on the eyewitness testimony of the two young boys, and the eyewitness identification of three others, one of whom identified Kirk only after seeing him on the news. Arrested within three weeks of the murder, Kirk maintained his innocence from day one, assuming that somehow, some way, the police would realize they had the wrong man and the nightmare would end. Sadly, it did not end. In March of 1985, Kirk Bloodsworth entered the dark recesses of the Maryland State Prison alone, branded a monster as he began his nine-year battle to prove his innocence from the confines of a miniature cell. At the end, Kirk Bloodsworth's own persuasive retelling of his trial and animated reenactments based on court records, police reports, and Kirk's instinctive memories, Bloodsworth tells the remarkable true story of how an honorably discharged former U.S. Marine with no criminal record was charged, convicted, and sentenced to death for a crime he did not commit, and how through his relentless commitment to his innocence and a truly incredible sequence of events, Kirk became the first individual in the United States to be exonerated by DNA evidence, an event that sparked an important shift in the criminal justice system that has led to overturning of 200 wrongful convictions across the nation. The technique they used to reveal this DNA evidence was RFLP, in which was the technique in which analyzed different lengths of repetitions in the DNA. Afterwards, the restrictions endonuclease enzyme cuts down the DNA at specific sites and then the variable lengths of DNA fragments are separated using gel electrophoresis. It was used to exonerate Kirk due to that Kirk was the first to use the DNA fingerprint process. Therefore, they yet did not discover the STR. The STR Short tandem repeats are multiple copies of a short, identical DNA sequence arranged in direct succession in particular regions of chromosomes. It is used to evaluate the specific regions within DNA that have repeated bases. Moreover, the differences in STR regions is used to distinguish one DNA profile from another. However, Kirk was pretty much lucky because they had enough DNA taken from the girl to be able to use the RFLP. And therefore, I think it is a good idea for the FBI to keep people's DNA because of times like this where they need to match the DNA with its owner to save the life of an innocent man or to imprison a criminal. The CODIS is the Combined DNA Index System. It's the generic term used to describe the FBI's program of support for criminal justice DNA databases as well as the software used to run these databases. Even though many people are against it for having something so private to people, it is better to have it and save innocent lives than to not have it only because people don't feel comfortable about the FBI keeping something so private and personal.